You are listening to a sermon from Village Baptist Church in Petaluma. For more sermons like this one, please visit our website at villagebaptisthome.org. Our mission is to win people to Christ and develop them into active disciples. We pray this sermon is a blessing to you. Now let's hear today's message. In your Bible or turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. What I'm doing this morning is going to be called the demonstrative sermon on the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to start with verse 17. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 17. Please uh, pay special attention as we read. And Paul wrote this in order to correct the observance of the Lord's Supper that we call communion. The Lord's Supper, communion in the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church was a unique church. A lot of the things that are corrected in the Bible were came out of the Corinthian church. So you can tell it was a messy church. Okay. Beginning with verse 17. In the following directives, I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And to some extent, I believe it. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. Now, let me me stop a minute to make a point. There is no problem at all with disagreements in the church. Because if we all agree all the time, We're all either going to be in the right corner all the time or in the wrong corner all the time. There ought to be people in the church, whether they're leaders or not, who have the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to correct something that is not right. As long as we do it in the spirit of love. Amen? Amen. Because we are all sinners. Let's keep going on. No doubt there have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. So then, when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat. For when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a a result, one person remains hungry, another gets drunk. Now, You may not fully understand what Paul is saying here. Because in the fellowship meal, they tend to come and sometimes have a full meal. That includes drinking. And drinking choice wine. And some overdo it, you know, because you may be asking yourself, how can you get drunk on that small cup? That wasn't what Paul was dealing with. When they did it, they didn't use small cups. They say modern day, we use small cups, small wafers and all that. You know, it's our own modern way of doing things. But in those days, they came and they ate full meal. They would eat before they had the fellowship. And Paul was saying, look, there are some poor people among you. Some of you come in here with gourmet dinners and different things, and you just ignore those people. Not only that, 
but you brought in the best wine you have and some of you overdo it. And while the thing is being served, you're already drunk. Ah, give me my wine. <laughs> For when you're eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry, another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? Now you get, you get an understanding now, what Paul is saying. Because when you parade your choice foods and your choice drink among people who have nothing, you're disgracing yourself. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. But Paul did not stop there. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have died. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we will not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further instructions. Amen? Amen. Amen. So there are some things that we ought to remember in our lives. Do you agree with that? Amen. I didn't hear any amen, so I was just wondering, am I in space or something? There are some things we ought to remember. Amen. amen. And I don't want to shame anybody, but if you were to ask, uh, John, when is your wife's birthday? John should be able to tell me. I don't want you to say it. Okay. But, but you should be able to, right, uh, Dick and Harrison? Amen. You know when your wife's birthday is, right? You, you know. <laughs> there are some things that we ought to remember. But not only that, there are some things we should remember and celebrate. There is no country that I have lived in that I do not remember their Independence Day. Amen. America is July the 4th. Canada is July 1st. Benin is August 1st. Nigeria is October 1st. Do you notice that only America has 4th? Everybody else is 1st. 
Those are important things you ought to remember. Amen. How many of you don't remember your birthday? <laughs> Galilee, when is your birthday? What day? It, so you remember it. All right. So it's really important that you remember significant things in your life. For example, you ought to remember the day that you were saved. Amen. It should be just like yesterday. Or remember the day you were baptized. Amen. Those are very important dates in your life and very important events in your life. As a Christian, you ought to remember when you were born again by the Spirit of God. Now, the sign that you don't remember could be because you were not really kind of saved. You kind of wiggle your way into the church. Being in the church doesn't mean you're saved. Amen. Singing and dancing to the Lord does not mean you're saved. If thou shalt confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Notice he did not say if you went to church, you'll be saved. If you dance in the church, you'll be saved. If you praise the Lord, you'll be saved. Amen. It says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. That's what it takes to be saved. It has nothing to do with your morality. It has nothing to do with your moral standard. It has nothing to do with how good you live your lives. The good things that you do, the moral standards that you have come out of the fact that you're saved. Because the Bible says it so you don't miss it at all. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy. He saved us by the washing of regeneration. And the renewal of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Am I still with you? Are you still with me? It's not going to be long. The communion is the outward expression of an inward reality. You are recognizing, you are celebrating what the Lord has done for you. You don't hear what I'm saying. Communion day is a day of celebration. Communion day is actually the true day of independence. You remember that you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. When we come to communion day, you recognize that God demonstrated his love toward us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Woo! Communion day is a day to destroy depression. Amen. Communion day is to tell you you are free. I remember in 1960, October 1st, 1960, as a young boy in Nigeria, in Lagos, we had our flag, green, white, green. We no longer fly the British flag anymore. It is now our own flag. We are free. No more control from the British Empire. We're set free. When you're saved, you look forward to communion day 
because it is a day that you celebrate freedom. Free, free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free from sin and death and destruction. Communion. When the assembled church, now, uh, this is a day that the church emphasizes togetherness. Communion is not a day to go to everybody's home and serve them. Now, we do, I, I noticed that uh, Sammy and Lynn are not here. And we probably need to make a, a, an arrangement to go serve them communion. I notice also that uh, Judy is still not coming. We need to make arrangement to go serve uh, her uh, communion. Uh, Joe Barrow is shut in at home. We need to make arrangement to go serve them communion, to go serve her communion. But what I'm saying here is communion is not a day for individuality. Communion tells you that you need to be in the congregation. The only way we're going to serve you is if you have legitimate reason for not being here. You miss it, you miss it. The assembled church. That is the definition of communion. Communion is when the assembled church eats bread and drinks wine in token of his complete dependence on Christ as the source of his salvation. The assembled church. Amen. I used to ask people, what is the definition of the church? And people say, the church is in my heart. I said, that's a wrong definition. That's not what the church is. The church is the body of Christ. The church is not you. Amen. You don't make the church. Amen. 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 The body is, the church is the body of Christ. The body consists of head, mouth, eyes, nose, uh, breast, uh, stomach, legs, hands, everything. They come together to form the body. Amen. Amen. You can't say you're the hand and you're the church. You're not. Stop lying to yourself. The church is the assembled body of Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why it's good to be together. That's why Jesus wants us to be together. Amen. Uh, unfortunately, COVID has made many of us lazy. We want church online. Hallelujah. Please, if you're watching online, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> the assembled church. You have to be assembled together to eat the bread and drink the wine. On the hill far away stood that old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And it was on that cross that Jesus bled and died so that you may have life and you may have right to the tree of life. Amen. I love you all. Amen. Love me back. I love that. But it doesn't make any sense. When you say you're the body of Christ and you haven't been in the church for three months. And you're not sick. Amen. I know many people I haven't seen in church for six months and I see them at Safeway.
<laughs> I'm sorry about Safeway. That's one of my favorite stores. <laughs> Safeway and Rayleigh's. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me make some point. Communion is reserved for Christians only. Amen. If you want to eat communion and you want it to make any sense to you, you ought to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I remember when the kids are growing up, they say, uh, we want to have that cracker too. And that drink. I said, without knowing the Lord, you can have the cracker. You can go to Safeway and buy your crackers and eat. But the one here that is blessed, that represents the body of Christ, you can't have it unless you're born again. Amen? Amen? To be born again means you have made a decision in your life. You've made a decision in your life to give your life to Jesus, to ask him to forgive you of your sins, to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You gave your life to him. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. You believe that he died for you on the cross. You believe that he was buried for you, and you believe that he rose again on the third day for your victory. That is what it means to be saved. You have to uh, repent of your sins, and the way to repent of your sin is to say, I am no longer want to go my own way. I want to go God's way. Amen. Amen. How many of you will be going the wrong way, and you see a U-turn sign, and you say, no, I don't want to use that. I don't like the shape. <laughs> when you're going your own way and you see a reason to turn away from the way of destruction and go to the way of victory, you turn right away. Amen. I remember when they, we didn't have the telephones. I mean, hand telephones. What do you call it? Smartphones? Cell phones. cell phones? In Africa, they call it mobile phones. And I remember when we didn't, we didn't have those. And every time we're on vacation, we'll be going and my wife will be saying, I think we're going the wrong way. I said, no, we're going the right way. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and then after I've gone a while, I said, you know what? She may be right. And in those days, you will stop. You will go into a gas station and ask them for a map. Or they already have a map on the wall. And you have to look where you are and where you're supposed to be. I wish I had time. But many of us don't want to stop. We're just going our way. We don't want to turn around. We don't want to turn to Jesus, but we want all the compliments. Communion is reserved only for Christians, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Communion is for commemoration. As you do this, you remember Christ's death until he comes back. You remember what he did on the cross for you. You remember that he died for you. You remember that only he can die to take away your sins. You remember that Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Communion. It's also expectation. 
We look forward to our time with God and be assured that he is coming back again. Amen. Amen. Every take you take communion is to remind you that there is going to be a resurrection. There is going to be a reunion. Hallelujah. I thank God for the communion. And that is why you don't want to uh, not take communion for a long time. Hallelujah. Some churches do it every week. Amen. Some churches do it every month. I stopped doing it every month because I see some people just dress up to come on communion day. I say, wait a minute, I can I can I cannot get this picture right. Why is it that you were not here the second Sunday? You will not hear the third Sunday. You will not hear the uh, fourth Sunday. If there were a fifth Sunday, you didn't show up. But first Sunday, here you come with your hat on. And that is why I don't share with people when communion is going to come, except for those who are in charge. If you want communion, come every Sunday. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't all have to agree, but I'm the pastor. (laughs) It's really interesting because the Catholics, the Catholics are good about serving communion every Sunday. And not only that, Not just every Sunday, if there's a funeral, they serve communion. If there's a wedding, they serve communion. There's really nothing wrong with that because communion is one of the central memorial events of our faith. But unfortunately, I have known some Catholics, some of them belong to my own family, that I know should not be taking communion. But immediately in the Catholic Church, I'm a member of the Catholic Church. I was baptized. And if the priest knew that since you were baptized, you've been to the voodoo house, voodoo shrine, and everything else, just about every week. And you're going up there to take communion. It's It's really a shame that sometimes we just think that What makes you a Christian is just your confession that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is King, that Jesus is a good teacher, that Jesus is... The devil knew that too. Becoming a Christian is not just making the confession... Should I say it again? I want to make sure you get it. It's not something that you say that just automatically transforms everything. Confession is what you believe in your heart and what you practice. Amen. Amen. Uh, Reverend Hunt, what will you do if I came to you and I give you a really dirty slap? (laughs) And I said, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? (laughs) Okay. It has been said that to, to... To do wrong is human, but to forgive is divine. So you're being, you're taking on the character of God by forgiving me. Do you really forgive me? Okay. And just after you said yes, just say yes, you forgive me, even if you don't mean it. Okay. 
Immediately you said that, I gave you another dirty slap. <laughs> you will remind me that when I was teaching people how to play soccer in Tiburon, you were there on the field practicing your kung fu. <laughs> And since I was, you know, teaching people how to play soccer, I know how to run away. <laughs> but many of us tell God, I love you, I love you, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and then we just don't recognize him anywhere. I am not saying becoming a Christian makes you a perfect person, but becoming a Christian means you will not slap God over and over and over again and just say, forgive me. Amen. Anyway, let me close. For both the local and the universal church, Communion was created by God. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember that the communion is very, very tied to the Passover. And the Jews still remember the Passover to this very day. Thousands of years ago. But they still practice it. It's a memorial. Celebration. As we do it today, we want to recognize what God has done for us. Amen? Amen. So, there's absolutely nobody here that's going to judge you. Amen? Amen? Sometimes you ought to say amen just for me to know you believe what I'm saying. Yeah? Just say amen. Amen. Nobody, or you want to judge somebody? Okay. Nobody here is going to judge you. The Bible says if you judge yourself, no one else will judge you. No one here, nobody sitting here, I say it with authority, I say it with all power, I say it because I know it is true. Nobody here is worthy to take this communion. Amen. Amen. I'm wearing my holy costume today because I truly believe that when God has called me to do certain services, I ought to put it on. Because they're not mine, they're his. Amen. The robe of service. But I'm not putting it on so that you know I'm holy. Because the holiness comes only from God. Amen. But I come here today to say this is a holy celebration. This is a sacred celebration. And nobody should take it lightly. Take it only because you have accepted the Lordship of Jesus in your life. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening. If you would love to hear more sermons like this one or find out more about our church, please visit us at villagebaptisthome.org. Until next time, take care and God bless.